Hello, my name is Kevin Frichty, and this is an introduction to the concept of how gravity may be the exchange of photon energy between electrons of different atoms and molecules. Uh, the way the calculation was done was similar to black body radiation. This is the gravity calculation. Here are some diagrams of the concept for starters that when an electron in an atomic orbital makes a turn, it must give off radiation due to Einstein's principle of E equals mc squared. It's, it's also a momentum balance as the electron starts to go the other way. What the electron does to give off this photon is yet unknown. Does it nutate? Does it flip? Does it change spin directions? Uh, that may be for others uh, coming up to, to figure out. Uh, the main calculation uses the photon energy hc over lambda, which can also be written as uh, Planck's constant h times frequency, if you like. That is also in black body radiation. Uh, Planck's law, you can find it in here, hc over lambda. Here we have lambda to the wavelength to the minus fifth power. Uh, the similarity between the Raleigh genes law, for example, we have, now this doesn't look like 4 thirds pi r cubed, and here's the volume of the mass. But what we have is a cube, uh, well, think of it as the black body being so small that it's a, the radius is one wavelength. And then you can expand it to any geometry you want. It was brilliant mathematics back in the late 1800s. And uh, this is Boltzmann's concept, uh, Bol Boltzmann's constant times temperature. And that will give you the energy of the waves. Now, this uh, led to what's called the ultraviolet uh, catastrophe. When, uh, when the wavelength got to be very, very small, this energy just blows up and it doesn't make any sense anymore. And so what Planck did was to introduce a constant and the natural exponent using the ratio of photon energy divided by Boltzmann's constant times temperature. And that way, at long wavelengths, uh, this formula drops back into uh, 8 pi kT lambda to the minus fourth, because these terms drop out. And at long wavelengths, uh, I'm, excuse me, at very, very short wavelengths, it goes to zero. So we are able to cover the uh, distribution of black body radiation over all wavelengths. And thus came Planck's constant H, which is used in virtually all quantum energy calculations today, including the calculation for gravity. Now the way this is done is we take the photon energy times the volume of the mass, and that energy is generated on a per mass basis, and that's why you have times 2 kg to the minus 2. And it's distributed over a surface area, which we're calling 4 pi r squared for a sphere. And as that energy spreads out, we have an expansion of the gravitational energy until it reaches another mass and causes an attraction. And this, too, is also because uh, unlike tension in a rope, where the force is constant throughout the rope and the people on a tug of war are doing the same force uh, at both ends, gravity is are two masses acting independently on each other, and that's why you need this factor of two. Now this other factor of two is a polarization factor, and that's uh, due to the fact that the electric field of an electromagnetic wave <coughs> does not interfere at all with the magnetic field of another wave. So you can basically turn two waves and they can coexist. And that's why the energy in a body doubles. Uh, <clears throat> one thing about gravity, though, is these waves are so small, they're 7.562 times 10 to the 22nd hertz, and the wavelength is only one and a half to two times the diameter of the electron. Now, since the, we can't possibly draw this mo molecular model to scale because just the space in an atom 
uh, in, to the first orbital, there's about 10,000 times the di diameter of a proton or a neutron space in there. And since these gravitational waves are so small, gravity always operates in a vacuum. Uh, and how can gravity traveling through the Earth or through the objects in this room, how can it be operating in a vacuum? Well, pressure and temperature is generated from molecules bouncing against each other, and it transmits the temperature to the wall of the chamber by bouncing off the molecules in the wall of a pressure vessel or temperature chamber. Uh, but we have gravitons flying through it all, and it's probable that most of them coming out of the Earth just go right through us and right through the objects in this room. And therefore, since temperature and pressure is generated by molecules hitting each other, and uh, in solids it's various modes of vibration, and that's what, where you come up with uh, this term right here. We don't need this term because gravity just flies through everything, operates always in a vacuum, and will only be absorbed when it uh, do, uh, when an electron is coming head on within a certain conical angle, it ab can absorb the photon, gain mass, and that uptick in mass produces a centrifugal force through the Coulomb attraction that pulls a little harder due to an increase in mass on the nucleus. And if you sum up all the uh, gentle pulls of an, of an incremental, uh, of an electron that has upticked in mass, that is the gentle pull of gravity. And gravity is a very, very weak force. Uh, the electron is a very small fraction, I think it's one eighteen hundredth around there, uh, the mass of a proton. It's already a very small mass. And it upticks only a very, very small percentage of its mass when it absorbs a graviton. And therefore, gravity is a very weak force.